Day, commemorating the National Vietnam War Memorial Veterans Day. We honor the six million U.S. veterans that are still with us, the families of those who have supported them over the years, and remember the more than 58,000 killed or missing in action. Though long overdue, we welcome you home today. Please stand for the posting of the colors by the Marine Corps Air Wing Band playing the national anthem. speaker today is Bill Hurd. Captain William H. Hurd Jr. joined the U.S. Navy Reserve in Lubbock, Texas and Seaman recruit in 1961. He participated in the Reserve Officer Candidate Program while a college student at Texas Tech and was commissioned an ensign in May of 1965. Hurd served as a line officer aboard ship during the Vietnam War. He concluded 35 years in the Navy Reserve in 1996 retiring as a public affairs officer. While serving aboard the USS Airedale County, then Ensign Hurd was deployed to South Vietnam. He made eight deployments to Vietnam as a first lieutenant and senior watch officer. In civilian life, Captain Hurd served in a multitude of public and media relations positions, as well as reporter, editor, and news producer. Captain Hurd volunteered for 13 years as a board member public information officer for the Miramar National Cemetery Support Foundation in San Diego. He retired from the board in March of 2022 as vice president. Captain Hurd wears combat action ribbon, meritorious unit citation, and among others. Please give him a warm welcome, our friend and colleague, Captain Hurd, United States Navy, retired.
Thank you, Jaime, for that nice introduction, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming out on this cold and dreary day. Oh, and thanks, Jaime, for arranging that nice flyover. I appreciate that. But thanks to all of you again for coming out today to commemorate National Vietnam War Veterans Day. This is a day when we recall the sacrifices of the men and women who served our country in Vietnam. We did our duty with honor. We tried to bring democracy to a country that did not have one. We helped preserve freedom for America. We set a standard of wartime service that has remained a tradition within our military. So let me say to all of you, welcome home. It's been a long time, 50 years since the end of the war, but it's never too late to say welcome home. welcome the spouses that are sitting among you. They, as much as those of us who served in Vietnam, they deserve our country's most sincere appreciation. spouses held the fort for us. They kept us in, our, in their hearts and in their prayers. Every day we were in the combat zone. And as we thought of them while we were deployed, it gave us courage and a reason to persevere. So let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Today we remember those 2.7 million American men and women who served our country during eight years of combat in Vietnam. And we must pay special homage to the memory of the 58,220 men and women who lost their lives during the war. Their names are inscribed forever on the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C. and in our hearts. You might ask, why are we meeting here today, March 29th, to mark this occasion? Recall that a war had been fought since 1954 between the French and the Vietnam Communists. But America's involvement only began in March of 1965 when 3,500 Marines came ashore in Da Nang as the first wave of U.S. combat troops in South Vietnam. <coughs> From there, our forces gradually uh, uh, escalated over the next eight years to involve the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. March 29th was chosen as National Vietnam War Veterans Day because it was on this day in 1973 that the Military Assistance Command Vietnam, known as MACV, was disbanded and the last U.S. combat troops departed the Republic of Vietnam. It was also the day on which the last prisoners of war held in North Vietnam arrived on American soil. You may have noticed when you drove into the cemetery today the inspiring prisoner of war statue that stands near the entrance. It symbolizes a POW's struggle, enduring hope, and final release to freedom. Please stop by to see it when you leave here today. On March 29, 2012, President Obama proclaimed Vietnam Veterans Day. In 2017, President Trump signed legislation officially recognizing March 29th as National Vietnam War Veterans Day. And so, here we are at Miramar National Cemetery to honor our Vietnam veterans. The Department of Veterans Affairs estimates that today there are more than 7 million Vietnam era veterans, whether they served in country or were stationed elsewhere. All were called to serve, the VA says, and none to determine where they would serve. My personal war began on Saturday, 22 October 1966, when my ship, USS Iredale County, LST-839, a reconditioned World War II amphibious ship, pulled into Da Nang Harbor. It was raining hard, almost like we're gonna get in a little while today. I was a, lot, a young Lieutenant Junior Grade and I had to con. We slowly steamed up the Pearl River 
past the old French colonial city of Da Nang. We found a small beach and offloaded some cargo that we had picked up for the Marines in Iwakuni, Japan. Then we coasted downriver to the landing beach at Monkey Mountain. We took on a load of ammunition for the Marines at Quaviet, a little river port about a mile or so south of the, the, Z, the DMZ, the militarized zone. For the next 21 months while I was aboard, that would be Iredell County's routine, transporting cargo from Da Nang, north to Quaviet, south to July, broken up by occasional trips back to our home port of Guam for replenishment and repairs. On three occasions, we took enemy fire. The first was artillery fire aimed at us while we were beached in July. Shells fell around the ship. No one was hurt, but shrapnel punched holes in one of our boats in the galley bulkhead. The second occasion happened on a dark night as we steamed south from Quaviet toward Da Nang. I had to come. Suddenly a rocket was fired at us from the beach. It roared overhead. We took immediate evasive action, darkened ship, turned out to sea. Again, no casualties. But had the rocket actually hit us, it would have caused major damage to the ship and severe loss of life among the crew. The third time we were in Quaviet, we had just entered the river with the intent of beaching to offload ammunition. The MO was intended for transport upriver to the Marines at Dong Ha. Suddenly the North Vietnamese fired an artillery round from the DMZ. The shell wasn't actually aimed at Iredell County. It struck in the middle of a huge pile of artillery shells and ammunition piled up on the Quaviet Beach. The ammo dump immediately erupted into a blazing inferno that cooked off the ammunition. For the rest of the day and through the night, Huge explosions racked the ammunition dump as our ship lay at anchor in the narrow river. Waves of concussion bubbles swept over the ship. They blew out our conning tower windows. Hot, jagged shrapnel rained down on our decks. <coughs> Luckily, despite the damage to the ship, only one sailor was injured. The next morning it was safe enough to move and we eased past the still smoldering ammo dump and sailed out of the river. I can tell you, we were never more happy to be back at sea. I'm sure many of you sitting in the audience today had equal and even more harrowing experiences during your time in Vietnam. Some veterans have been affected by their Vietnam service for the rest of their lives. Let me spend a few minutes now telling you about some of the heroes who were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for their service in Vietnam. In May 1964, Army Captain Roger Donovan's Special Forces Detachment had established an outpost at Nam Dong near the border of Laos. During a violent five-hour assault by a Viet Cong battalion, Donovan repeatedly reorganized his defenses, dragged wounded soldiers to safety, and kept the enemy at bay, despite suffering at least five serious wounds. Donovan was the first Medal of Honor recipient of the Vietnam War. By the way, in 2013, Colonel Donlan was guest speaker here at Miramar for the dedication of the Special Forces Monument. You can see that monument and other monuments honoring veterans groups on the Memorial Walk back down the Avenue of Flags near the Admiral Building. The first U.S. Marine to receive the Medal of Honor was First Lieutenant Frank Reasoner. Reasoner was leading a reconnaissance patrol deep into enemy territory when the patrol came under machine gun fire of Viet Cong insurgents. The lieutenant organized the defense and repeatedly ran to the aid of his wounded Marines. He was mortally wounded during the assault and was awarded the Medal of Honor posthumously. Navy Lieutenant Junior Grade Clyde Lassen, who had only recently become a helicopter pilot when he flew into the Vietnam jungles in 1965 to rescue two aviators whose aircraft had crashed. Despite damage to his chopper, Lassen made two attempts under heavy enemy fire to rescue the men. On his final approach, he hovered just inches above a muddy field to take the men aboard his helo. With only five minutes of fuel to spare, he flew them to safety. Lassen was the first Navy member to be awarded the Medal of Honor during the Vietnam War. Air Force Major Bernard Fisher was the first to receive the Air Force Medal of Honor during Vietnam. He distinguished himself in March 1966 
during an enemy attack on Special Forces camp at Ah Shao. Low clouds obscured nearby mountains, restricting flying. Despite this difficulty, Fisher was determined to rescue a wounded pilot forced down on the camp's heavily damaged airstrip. He landed his plane and under heavy fire, taxied around obstacles and took the downed pilot on board. He then managed to take off in his bullet riddled aircraft, saving the airman's life. I think it's important to mention two other men, if you could bear with me during the rain, okay? Whose courage and heroism during the Vietnam War were worthy of the Medal of Honor, but who went unrecognized until many years later. Both men are African American. In 1969, Army Sergeant First Class Melvin Morris was commander of a five-man Special Forces team on a search and destroy mission near the Cambodian border. When his team was attacked, Morris waded through a blistering firefight to rescue a fallen comrade and to keep crucial classified information out of enemy hands. He was wounded three times during the fight. Morris initially was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for his actions. That award finally was upgraded, and in 2014, President Obama presented the Medal of Honor to Morris in a White House ceremony. Just this month, March 3rd, President Biden presented the Medal of Honor to 83-year-old Army Colonel Paris Davis. That was 60 years after he led a Special Forces team in a pre-dawn raid on the Viet Cong camp at Bang San. His citation was lost, then it was found, then it was lost again, and finally found. As President Obama described it during the White House ceremony, hundreds of the enemy swarmed in Captain Davis' team engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Although he was suffering multiple wounds, Davis sprinted across the rice field while under intense fire to save two of his men. After nearly 20 hours of combat, Davis was able to bring all his troops to safety. For his actions, he was awarded the Silver Star, the Bronze Star, the Purple Heart, and now the Medal of Honor. We must honor the heroism of these men but also the everyday bravery of all who served in Vietnam, whether they received public recognition for their service, whether they did their duty, serving honorably and well during that eight-year conflict. Every Vietnam veteran, man or woman, deserves our thanks. I'd like to end my remarks by making a suggestion. Following, uh, well, not today because it's raining, but the next time you're out here, I would encourage you to walk among the graves here at Miramar National Cemetery. Since the cemetery opened in January 2010, some 30,000 veterans and spouses have been interred here. As you walk through these beautiful grounds, pay your respects to them, but particularly to those from the Vietnam War. We owe it to all our veterans. So, welcome home. Why do we do this every year? Um, I'm going to tell you a story uh, between a, a conversation that I had with a colleague that works for uh, VSO. He's a Vietnam era veteran. And uh, we were talking about our time in the service. And I told him about, uh, you know, I came in right after Desert Shield, Desert Storm. And, uh, you know, conversation just grew from there. And we got to the topic of uh, coming home. And uh, he told me, Jaime, it's important that you Desert Shield, Desert Storm guys, and Afghanistan, Iraq veterans understand that we didn't come home to parades. And uh, it made me feel a kind of way. You know, I, I, I can't describe it. I can't describe it because uh, I, I can't imagine it. And I know that there's no way we will ever be able to make up for that part of our history. But we hope that you can see that we genuinely mean when we shake your hand and say welcome home, we mean it. We mean it because you set the pathway for them, for us, for all the folks behind you, for all the generational warfighters that came after you. 
He left us a legacy that uh, was hard to follow. Ladies and gentlemen, our service has concluded. Retire the colors. <laughs>